Why do you want to work out? What is your goal? The most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never going to end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. You know, I mean, maybe the guy uh, that found gold in California and started the gold rush, but don't count on that. That's the one in a, in a lifetime kind of a situation. So you got to really have a specific order to me to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe. That I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. That was a great vision and that specifically to look like Reg Park and to be up there on that stage and to lift the trophy overhead and to win the championship over and over and over again. So that was a great goal. You have to have a goal. Now it doesn't have to be that specific goal, but it has to have some goal. This is why I always recommend to people, sit down, take your time and start thinking about why do you want to work out? What is your goal? And then it can't be as crazy as it is. It, it could be, uh, you know, I want to impress girls. If that's your goal, so be it. But it motivates you. It could be that you're emulating a certain, uh, you know, bodybuilder or a certain football player, a certain boxer, whatever it is. Have those pictures put all over the wall like I did when I was a kid. I put pictures of Rich Park and of Sonny Liston, of uh, boxers and of Ali and of powerlifters and weightlifters all over my bedroom, uh, you know, uh, wall. So that every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up, I look at those pictures and they motivate me. You need that motivation and then therefore you have this kind of imprint in front of you all the time and you know exactly what you're chasing. People always come up to me and say, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. You're doing the same as the other guys, but the other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep or another set or something. I looked forward to, I looked forward to another thousand set, uh, reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. So I was turned on by that. I was excited. I couldn't wait to get to the gym. I remember that when I weighed 245 pounds and Bob Rafelson, the director of Stay Hungry, said to me that I'm interested in having you come in for a reading and work on your acting and all this because I'm interested in having you in a movie to star with uh, Jeff Bridges and with Sally Fields. I was delighted about that and I was excited and I started pumping up more and more. And then he said, but I don't want you to weigh more than 210 pounds. You want me to be in a movie, but I'm weighing 245, 246. I say, I just won the Olympia, I say, in 19, which was 1974. And I was really at my biggest. And, uh, but he demanded that. And he says, look, it's very simple. On the day we start shooting, he says, I'm going to put you on a scale. And if you don't make the 210, you're out. Because I have someone else in mind. And I worked on it. I started visualizing myself very clearly as a lean athlete. Because that's the only way I could lose that weight and all of a sudden get interested in running more. Because up until that point, I ran like three miles after training or before training or whatever. But now all of a sudden it was five miles, six miles, seven miles, eight miles. And they even ran mini marathons in order to lose the weight. And I did everything with high reps. And I was watching my diet, what I eat and all those kind of things. And by the day, the day before, I remember we were in Birmingham, Alabama. The day before I was at the YMCA with Bob Rafelson. He was swimming and I was working out and I was running. There was a track there and I was running. He says, let's step on the scale. And I stepped on the scale and I weighed 209. So it just shows you what is possible if you visualize exactly what you want to look like.
and there was no room for any kind of like, well, I can't get my act together or anything like this, because there's only a certain amount of time. But the key thing again is have the clear vision. Have the specific goal of what you want to accomplish, because then you never go to the gym and you say, the day I feel down a little bit, I don't know what it is all about, I don't know my life, I'm confused. No. I tell you that I was a perfect example of someone that was not confident at all. I mean, when I was a kid, I was just like any other kid. I had my hang-ups and problems and all this. But when I joined the weightlifting club and I won my first little trophy because I did the best clean jerk, and then we went to another meet and then won another little trophy. I started feeling like somebody. But the bottom line is, everyone can use the same method because I used it in politics, I used it in making money, I used it in everything that I've done in the movie business. When you have one little victory, little victories add up and that is what gives you then ultimately confidence. Well, for me, the most important thing always is to have a deadline. Uh, so uh, when I, for instance, uh, had a competition, and let's say the competition was in the middle of September, and it was now beginning of summer, so there was no more time to screw around. So there was the time now to get uh, going on a diet, to get going with the training, to not slack off at all, because there was a deadline there. The day of the competition, I had to be in the best shape possible. And I knew that uh, if I come to the competition and I lose because I did not schedule my training the proper way, or I didn't have the right frame of mind, or I didn't give everything, literally worked my butt off, I would be just so angry. So I never wanted to be in that situation. So this is why it was very important to pick that time and to say, this is when I have to be in top shape, then I work towards that. But it's not just with the competition. I mean, they're always the same in the movie business. I mean, to me, it was always a big advantage when I said, okay, my movie starts on April 1, and I have now three months, so I have to get really in great shape. So you pick those times. It could also be that you have no movie, and you have no Mr. Olympia, or no Mr. America, or no Mr. Universe coming up, or any of those things. But you say to yourself, the summer starts in June. I'm gonna go to the beach in June, and at that time, I want to be in great shape. So that creates an urgency that makes you really start training hard and taking it seriously. Because if you don't have a specific plan, then you wander around. I mean, you can have, as I've told you many times, the best ship or the best plane in the world. But if you don't have a specific goal where you want to go and when you want to get there, you just drift around and you never get anywhere. So this is why it is so important to create that urgency and have a specific time when you want to be in shape. Well, I mean, look, everyone has a problem with time. But the day is 24 hours and we sleep six. Now, I know there's some out there that say, whoa, 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 I need eight. But I say, just sleep a little faster. Because the bottom line is we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available, so you have 18 hours now available to your work, your family, your hobbies, and also to learn something new or to do something new which could easily be that you want to learn a new language or that you want to read as a you know, New Year's resolution after read a book every week. Or, or you say, I'm going to go and reshape my body. So you're going to go and take this hour out of your schedule and say, I'm going to train an hour every day. So this is for most people a, hu a huge challenge, but it is totally doable, I can tell them, because the kind of things that I did when I came to this country, I mean, I went to school, I was working in construction, I was working out my five hours a day. I was taking acting classes from eight o'clock at night to 12 midnight. I was doing all of those things. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. And so there I just want to tell people, don't give me this thing, I have a difficult time with the time and I don't have time for this and I don't have that. You have time, you make the time. When you get up in the morning, don't think. Just roll out of bed, go in your life cycle, or go on a bicycle ride, or go to the gym, work out. You know that's what you have to do. And then read something and learn something. So don't even think about it. Stay hungry. As soon as you think that you're perfect, 
That's when you're screwed. I gotta get better. I gotta lose more weight. I gotta trim down my tummy. I gotta be, get bigger calves. I gotta get bigger deltoids. You know, if you're not quite reaching your goal because you didn't do everything that you could do. You have time. You make the time. Too much is not enough. If I fall down, I, I have no fear of fainting in a gym because I know it's, it, it, it could happen. I threw up many times while I was working out, but it doesn't matter because it's all worth it. Stay hungry. I do everything that I can to be a winner and to get the body that I envision. If you do something, then do it. Go all out. You have time. You make the time. You can do it. You can do it. You can be the greatest. Do it. Go for it. I looked forward to another thousand reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did, and every set that I did, and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. You can do it. Why do you want to work out? What is your goal? If I can see it, and if I can believe it, then I can achieve it. You know, everything seems to be always impossible until someone does it. I don't want to be Mr. Universe. I don't want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time, to win the championship over and over and over again, and to lift the trophy overhead. So that was a great goal. You have to have a goal. You can be the greatest. You can do it. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. You have time. You make the time. Stay hungry. Little victories add up, and that is what gives you then ultimately confidence. You can be the greatest. Stay hungry. We all fail. The key thing is, is to keep in mind what is your goal and keep looking at that as you get up and dust yourself off. Work your butt off. It is so important that you work your butt off. Don't ever look for shortcuts. We are not going to be remembered for how much we made, but for how much we have given. Make sure that it is not about me, that it is about we. Turn the me into we, and I guarantee you that you can change the world. None of us can make it alone. None of us. Not even the guy that is talking to you right now. I know I wouldn't be here without my parents creating me, nurturing me. And then later on, when I went to school, there were the teachers. And then there were the mentors, the coaches. And then my mother was there in the afternoon helping me with my homework and with tutoring. And then in the evening, my father was there helping me in sports, coaching us in soccer and in the winter skiing. My father taught me about discipline and my love and appreciation for sports. And he gave me my first great advice by saying, Whatever you do, Arnold, be useful. If I wouldn't have met a lifeguard at the lake where I grew up and some bodybuilders that introduced me to weight training and they taught me the first chin up on a branch of a tree by that lake and that eventually introduced me also to a weightlifting club locally where the coaches taught me about powerlifting and weightlifting and bodybuilding, they helped me and they nurtured me, they pushed me. And then eventually I saw a magazine with Reg Park on the cover. It said, Mr. Universe becomes Hercules. There was Reg Park in a Hercules pose on the cover. I bought that magazine and I read the story from the front to the end cover. And let me tell you something. I read exactly how he trained five hours a day, and how he became a champion, Mr. Universe, three times and how he went to America. And then he was discovered in the, the movies, Hercules movies. Or well, when I read that, I found my vision. And let me tell you, the most important thing in life is to have vision, to know exactly where you're going. I found my vision. That magazine, Reg Park, gave me my blueprint for my life. And five years later, after training five hours a day, just like him and doing his exercises, I became the youngest Mr. Universe ever. The reason why I want you to understand that is, is because as soon as you understand that you are here because of a lot of help, 
then you also understand that now is time to help others. That's what this is all about. You got to help others. Don't just think about yourself, help others. Tear down this mirror. Tear down this mirror that makes you always look at yourself and you will be able to look beyond this mirror and see the millions of people that need your help. And let me tell you something, when I heard that, it all made sense to me, that we have to go out and help. Because I decided not to listen to the naysayers, and because I decided to work as hard as I did in bodybuilding, myth. Now I know you're going to say, look, we have read so many stories about you and we saw documentaries where they talk about that you are the model of the American dream and that you are the perfect example of the self-made man. Well, let me tell you, I have seen and heard and read those stories myself. I enjoy reading them. But the fact of the matter is, it is not the whole story. I didn't make it that far on my own. I mean, to accept that credit or that mental would discount every single person that has helped me to get here today. That gave me advice, that made an effort, that gave me the time, that lifted me up when I fell. And it gives the wrong impression that we can do it alone. None of us can. The whole concept of the self-made man or woman is a myth. Never ever think small. If you're going to accomplish anything, you have to think big. You have to go and shoot for the stars. The biggest challenge most people have is because they think small. And the reason why people think small and why they choose small little goals is because they're afraid to fail. They know that if you shoot for a big goal, then the chances of failing are very high. And they're afraid of failing. It's one of the most common things why people are frozen and why they can't make a move in life because they're scared of failing. I say to myself, hey, I'm not worried about failing because that's part of life. You're not going to go and win everything. And how far can you fall? Look at this. This is the ground. That's as far as I can fall. And you know something? That the only time you really consider the failure is if you fall and you don't get up. But if you get up, you never consider the failure. So I never considered myself a failure. I always considered myself a winner, even though I fell every so often. But I always got up and I always moved forward. This is the important thing. I never had any patience, of course, for sm thinking small. If you do something, then go all out and do it well. And this was not just the case in bodybuilding. I didn't just want to be a bodybuilding champion. I wanted to be the greatest bodybuilder of all times. I wanted to have the most muscle, the, the most muscle of all times, the most definition. I wanted to win the most trophies, the most world championship titles. I just wanted to be the best. And the same is also in movies. I didn't just think about being in movies. No, I wanted to be a movie star. I wanted to have above the title billing. I wanted to become the highest paid entertainer. I basically wanted to be another John Wayne. What's wrong with that? Wherever I go, people ask me all the time, what is the secret to success? I think I can give you the long version here. The long version is that I actually always had five rules. And everything that I did, I always used those five rules. And those five rules helped me to become successful in various different areas. And I think, I believe that those rules can be applied to almost anyone and everyone. You don't need to be a bodybuilding champion. You don't need to want to be a governor of California or to be an action hero or anything like that. If you want to excel in whatever you do, those rules are for you. It's that simple. I think that we all here like to be successful and we are driven 
So that's why those rules apply to you. So my first rule is find your vision and follow it. You see, I think it's the most important thing that we have a very clear vision of where we go. A goal, where, where do we go? Because you can have the best ship in the world. You can have the best cruise liner, but if the captain does not know where to go, that ship will drift around the world and out there at sea and will never end up anywhere. And this is exactly the way it is in real life. If you don't have a goal, if you don't have a vision, you just drift around and you're not going to be happy. This is why it is so important to have that vision. Now, I created that vision in Austria because I grew up after the Second World War. The problem was that everyone was so depressed because they lost the war that there was alcoholism everywhere. There was, of course, depression. There was a terrible economic situation. There was famine. There was starvation and all those things. And also it was kind of a little place and narrow. I felt kind of, I wanted to get out of there. I wanted to escape. And I couldn't see myself really to work there and to stay there, to work in a factory or to work on a farm or to even to follow my father's footsteps and to become a police officer. I couldn't see that either. As a matter of fact, that's what my, my parents wanted me to do. But that's not what I saw. This was the vision of my parents, but not mine. And luckily, one day in school, I watched a documentary about America. And I found myself. I knew exactly that is where I wanted to end up. I wanted to be in America. Everything that I saw in the documentary, I just loved. Everything was so big. I remember the tall skyscrapers, the monstrous bridges, the giant freeways filled with beautiful cars, the huge jetliners, movie stars, Muscle Beach, and all of those things. I could not wait to get there. The question was just, how do I get there? How do I get to America? I mean, this was not a common thing to do way back in the 50s. No one had the money to travel or anything. But one day I was fortunate enough to see a magazine. And that magazine showed me the path to America. And it was a bodybuilding magazine. And on the cover was this very muscular guy that was standing there like Hercules with a Hercules outfit. His name was Reg Park. This Reg Park was on that cover and I remember the cover said, Mr. Universe becomes Hercules star. I read the article as fast as I could, learning about how he grew up in Leeds in England, poor, and how he trained five hours a day, every single day, and trained and trained and trained and lifted weights, and then he finally became Mr. Great Britain. And then he became Mr. Universe. And then he won a second Mr. Universe title and a third Mr. Universe title. And then all of a sudden he landed in Rome in Chinichita doing Hercules movies. And there he made millions of dollars and this, this money he took and bought himself a gymnasium chain in South Africa and he became a successful gymnasium owner. And as I read, I became more and more certain about my own future. As I read this story, I was so excited, so interested, I knew exactly that I wanted to become another Reg Park. I know he laid out the blueprint for my life, basically. I could see myself, I could visualize myself clearly to be a champion on that same stage where he won the Mr. Universe, and then to move to America, then get into movies, and then become rich and famous. I had that vision very clearly laid out. I was so happy that I knew exactly where I was going. From that moment on, everything that I did, no matter how hard I had to work or how much I had to struggle, it didn't matter. It was a wonderful joy ride because I knew what the purpose was and I found my passion. The simple truth is, if you don't have a vision, if you don't have a goal, if you don't see your future laid out in front of you, you are just floating around without a purpose. And I think that the numbers speak for themselves. This is why so many people around the world are unhappy with their jobs. I mean, in America, 74% of the people hate their job and would like to change jobs. But think about that. That means that only a quarter of the Americans love their life's work. I mean, that is a very depressing statistic. I always smiled when I worked, no matter how hard I worked. I always had a great time, no matter what I did. It didn't matter if it was in bodybuilding, or if it was in the movies, or if it was as governor. I remember in the pumping iron days, people ask me in the gym all the time, why are you smiling all the time? Why are you so happy? You have to lift 50 tons of weights. 
You have to train five hours a day. I mean, I look at the other bodybuilders' faces and lifters' faces, and they look kind of depressing. They look sour. They're miserable that they have to lift weights. You, you don't look miserable, you look happy. And I tell them always, I say, I smile because I know exactly that every rep that I do, that every set that I do, every weight that I lift, I get one step closer to turning that vision of mine into reality and becoming that Mr. Universe. I could not wait to lift another 500 pounds in the squats. I could not wait to do another thousand sit-ups. I could not wait to do bench press, more bench press and more curls until I couldn't move my arms anymore. Because I knew that every rep got me closer to standing on that stage as a champion. As a matter of fact, when I lifted weights, I didn't really feel like I was lifting weights. I felt like I was lifting a trophy over my head each time I lifted. And to have all those bodybuilders around me and thousands of people screaming. And I tell you that this vision didn't just help me in bodybuilding, it helped me with everything, like I said. I remember in the movie business, there was many times stunts that I had to do, where I got hurt, where I was in pain, in agony, and I had to do it over and over again. I remember one incident specifically in Conan the Barbarian. There, there I was crawling on all four, on rocks, over rocks and gravel, holding my sword right in front of me. And as I was crawling, the camera followed me, it was around 30 feet that I had to crawl on those rocks and this gravel. And eventually, after 10 takes, my elbows and my knees started bleeding and hurting. And the director came to me sheepishly and said to me, he says, do you mind if we do another take? I need a close-up of you. And I said to him, no, I don't mind at all. I said, go and do as many takes as you want. He says, no, 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 I don't want to do that because I know you're in pain, you're bleeding. I said, no, 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 I don't feel any pain. I said, the only thing I see is, is the finished scene. This is why I did not feel that pain. I did not care if I was bleeding on my knees because I know that pain is temporary, but the film is permanent. And I explained that to the director. So this is why I try to tell you, always discover your vision and the rest will follow.